Old School has so many ways to train your skills and build the bank, but loads of great methods get written off as complicated, risky, or too intense. My goal is to get more people into those methods that are better than many give them credit. This is Underrated Methods. For the first episode, I want to dive into thieving. These days, there's a lot of viable methods. It's relatively established that the sweatiest XP hunters go blackjacking, the financially suffering go to elves, and finally normal people go to arty knights. But there are new methods in town. Varlamore introduced probably the most AFK method targeted for mid-game, but that's not our focus. We're here to talk about the rogues' chests. For the clips you're about to see, we'll be rocking the following setup. Din's Bulwark, Black Dee-Eyed, Proselyte Helm, Glory, and some Rune Gloves for a little bonus defense. You can totally run this with only Monk Robes or honestly absolutely nothing if you're worried about risk, uh, but this setup will only risk about 25k. If you've done the Wilderness Hard Diary, you can set your destination to the Deep Wild and just teleport that way. Otherwise, an Anacarl teleport will take you close. The only reason I bothered switching to this tank here setup is there's a surprising amount of solo PKers and super uncoordinated teams, which allows for plenty of escapes. I also opted not to bring a looting bag, which means less supplies to tank with, but that's because I'm trading to my ult. If you're planning on banking yourself, then bring a looting bag if you have it, because uh, then all the loot will go in there directly and will only take up a single spot. Next, let's talk method. Pray melee and stand between these two chests. All you need to do is click between the two chests as the search for traps option is available. Using the open option will deal damage to you. If you use object markers, I highly recommend waiting until the chest is ready, then marking it with an object marker. If you do this, as well as make sure the menu entry left click option is search for traps, then all you need to do is wait until the chest changes color to whatever your object marker is, click on the chest, and wait. You'll notice there's a pretty substantial delay between getting to the chest and you actually opening it and the rogues attacking you. The good thing about this is if you're late to the chest, you'll still be able to loot it even after someone else has as long as you're locked into this animation. The bad news is, if you get attacked while you're doing this, you're locked into the animation and can't do much about it. Let's compare this to some other methods. First off, Arty Knights. Before 95, when you can still fail, you're looking at about 100 to 170k XP per hour and 120 to 210k GP starting at 55 going to about 95. Once you hit 95 and you can't fail, you're getting about 250k XP an hour max and 300k GP an hour max. Blackjacking, 260k XP an hour max, 225k GP an hour max. Finally, we've got elves at 90 to 150k XP an hour and 1.5 to 2.5 mil per hour. Know that that top number includes having the thieving cape already. Blackjacking and Arty Knight should make you 10 mil and 15 mil respectively going all the way to 99. 84 to 99 at the rogues chests should get you around 90 mil, which means even if you're losing an absurd amount of loot there, like 50%, you should still be tripling or quadrupling what you're getting doing blackjacking or arty knights to 99. Let's talk loot. In my 2200 chest, I average about 6,209 GP per chest. The wiki states that for someone without any of the diaries, you'd be getting about 3829 per chest. There's no real jackpot piece of loot. It's all just consistent, even money makers. But what about Iron Man? Cash-wise, you should still be able to pull as much raw GP as Blackjacking or Arty Knights, but get some other nice supplies as well. Potentially the highlight for Iron Man would be something like Dragonstones, Red Spider's Eggs, and depending on where you are in your account, a fair amount of Law and Nature runes. If you wear Ring of Wealth, you'll get a hard clue every about 50 chests, otherwise it'll be about every 100. If you don't want these clues, it'll give you additional prayer potions to sustain yourself. I found for this setup that without wearing a ring of wealth, I got just about the right amount of prayer potions and maximized my loot so I wasn't just getting doses I didn't need. Let's talk XP and chest per hour. Each chest will give you 701.7 XP. The wiki says theoretically you could get 420 chests per hour, giving you about 295k XP. I did this at probably the worst possible time, peak hours on a Saturday, and still pulled about 240k. Off peak hours was able to pull that 260-265. That equates to about 350 to 400 chests per hour. If you've done your Wilderness Hard Diary, that turns into about 2.1 to 2.5 mil GP per hour. So the last thing to cover is the elephant in the room, PKers. I ran into a fair few PKers during peak hours, but most of them were after the bots that are usually level 8 to 40. If you're a higher level character, at least 80% of the PKers couldn't even attack me. The Wilderness Player Alarm, while being a total eyesore, is good at alerting you and you can often run to an escape before the logging in player can actually move. In total, over my 2400 or so chests, I died three times, losing the 900k on screen. That left me with the grand total of 12 mil in a bit over six hours, along with 1.7 mil XP. So is it worth it? 
With the changes to the chest loot and XP, anyone can admit it's at least a viable method. Depending on your account type, the loot may be more or less appealing, but it offers at least something for everyone. With XP rates that are competitive with the fastest in the game, you should get that 99 probably slightly slower than the more consistent XP methods, but with the low intensity and payout on par with elves, it's definitely going to be how I finish the skill. If you're an Iron Man who needs crystal shards and got an early enhanced, probably stick to elves, but if you're a main looking to have a low risk, low intensity, and similarly profitable method, go for it. But definitely avoid peak hours. Thanks for watching. This is the first video I posted on this channel, so any feedback, comments would be greatly appreciated. Thanks.